Welcome to the first hands-on video in our OPIC series. Today we're focusing on logging traces, the foundation of LLM observability. Traces in OPIC capture the complete interaction between your application and an LLM, including inputs, outputs, and metadata, as well as feedback scores if you're calculating them. Think of them as the equivalent of logs in traditional software, but specifically designed for LLM applications. Let me show you how easy it is to implement tracing with OPIC. To start, you want to copy your API key. For that, you click your uh, profile picture in the top right. Go to the API key section and click Copy. Then, you can find this um, OPIC cookbook for OpenAI inside of the documentation. If you go to cookbooks and then OpenAI, you will find this cookbook. And then it's really a matter of uh, configuring OPIC. You just import OPIC and configure the workspace that you're using as well as your API key. And then I also like to uh, set my OPIC project name as an environment variable. Otherwise, as you can see here, the um, all the traces will go to the default project, which you might not want. As you can see here, mine is empty because I always would rather log to a specific project that I'm working on. But to get started with, you can also leave this out. Other than that, we will also configure our open AI API key. You can find that in the open AI console under settings. Then for open AI, we do have an integration, which means that we can import the open, AI, the track open AI um, function wrapper from our OPIC integrations, open AI uh, sub module. And then it's really as easy as importing the OpenAI client and then passing it into the track OpenAI function and then interacting with OpenAI through that. And if we run this now to test our OPIC setup, we see this ran through successfully. And now we can go into our observability section and projects we see that the latest interaction uh, in this project was just now. We click in here, open the trace, and see that I can make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to read for you guys. You can see that the trace isn't here, the input and output to our question. Apart from the track OpenAI integration that we use here, we can also always use the track decorator from OPIC to uh, decorate our functions. If we do that, we will get a much more nuanced um, trace stack within our project. For example, here I have three functions that have been decorated with our track decorator. And we are still using our track OpenAI function and using the OpenAI client that we have defined here to interact with the LLM. Let's define these functions. And then, uh, as you can see here, we have the generate OPIC story function, which then calls the generate topic and then generate story. And if we refresh our page over here now, we could see that a new trace has been added. And here you can see that the spans that are added under this trace are named exactly like our functions in the notebook on the right over here which makes it really easy to find what you're looking for while you are looking through your traces. So we have called the generate OPIC story as the top level function. So that's how our trace is named. 
and then we there uh, we go into the generate opic story function itself it uh, it even toggles over here if you want to do use that and then we can see there's another function called generate topic and then generate story which are the same that we have here then we can see the lm interactions for each of those functions and if there were more lm integration uh, interactions in each of these functions, they would show up under this. Now, if you're using a different framework like Langchain or Llama Index, we do have dedicated integrations that make tracing, tracing very simple. Once again, we can go back to our documentation, to cookbooks, to the integration section, and we can go to Llama index down here and just briefly look at how we would integrate with Llama index. And I believe this is a simple rag example even in this case, which is uh, pretty cool to get, uh, makes it really easy even to get started with basic use cases like that. Right, let's go back to our view here and projects, and then back to the uh, uh, OpenAI example. Now we can see all of our traces here and all, also our LM calls. So the traces kind of stack LM calls together, and here we see the individual LM calls, which will highlight the specific L LM call here. So this one highlighted kind of this at the bottom. If I click the one before that, it will highlight the one before. But it will always bring you back to the trace because that's where everything comes together. Additionally, you can use the search functionality here if you're looking for specific uh, trace IDs. Perhaps you have um, a production run where you have this in the logs and you can uh, look, look the, up the ID. Otherwise, um, the filter methods that we have here are pretty useful. For example, we can uh, say we only want all the traces from earlier today, yesterday, this week, and then filter by start and end time. We can also filter by tags. For example, we can go into a trace, and in this case, there is no tag attached yet, but we can say add the tag open AI. Then we can go back to tags and says contains open and it will filter it out. And look at this, we already have a bunch of um, traces that automatically have the OpenAI tag. Later on, when you are using feedback scores, you can even use the filters that are here to select feedback scores and select only the traces that have been, that are above a certain threshold that done have done particularly well. Uh, or in this case, um, I added a pass fail metric um, in, for, for this particular trace, which we will discuss later on. This was just to show you the filter option here. For more complex applications uh, like RAG or multi-step chains, OPIC automatically creates spans for each step, giving you visibility into the entire process. This is incredibly valuable for uh, debugging and understanding where things might be going wrong. In the next video, we'll explore how to annotate these traces to build a feedback loop for your LM applications, which we'll reference back the pass-fail score that I've just showed you. Thank you for listening.